going to be more correct that if you're read as being negative, consider yourself positive. And if you're positive, consider yourself negative. By the way, at the request of many individuals, I did go for a test a couple of weeks ago in New York City at the biggest clinic there that does more testing than anybody else. And the doctor who ran it was bragging about the fact that he did more. When I told him about the book I wrote, he said, shh, don't say anything. My patients might hear. Okay. I tested negative. And of course, Fauci said that you need, or when he was answering what I did in uh, Cleveland a week ago, he said, well, he's going to have to stick himself 300 times to transmit the virus. Where are you people in the press? 300 times to transmit a virus? You cannot have an epidemic under those circumstances. <laughs> if you can't transmit it by blood, you certainly can't transmit it sexually. Unless you're into real sadistic acts during sex. I don't know how much blood you want to draw. <laughs> it's literally unbelievable what they're getting away with. How does the press let this go? Oh, an epidemic. The United States government says 12,000 people died each year from 1985 to 1992. Now, a child in public school will tell you an epidemic starts out in one year, you got everybody's involved. That's where they would put it. 12,000 a year for seven years in a row? That's not epidemic. By definition, it's endemic. And you would expect in seven years, considering it spread sexually, that you'd have probably 15 to 20 million. We're a pretty active country when it comes to sex. We like to put it down, but we sure belie it in the behavior that we do. Oh, an epidemic, really. In Russia, 105 deaths from AIDS since 1987. In uh, Philippines, 80 deaths since 1984. Epidemics? There is no epidemic. But who has to gain from this? Dr. Duesberg? What is he gaining from this? That alone should alert the press to who's telling the truth. And if you hear an argument amongst politicians and one calls the other names and doesn't answer the specific charges scientifically, who's the liar? Fauci and Gallo, instead of answering the scientific conflicts and contradictions that Dr. Duesberg has so brilliantly pointed out, instead of answering them, they call him a homophobe. Can you imagine? I've been called a homophobe too. I wonder, I come here with a message of hope to not only the gays, but to the blacks and the Hispanics and the, all the other outcasts of society, which strangely enough are the only groups that have been connected with the so-called AIDS. Because you see, if you belong to one of those groups, you've got AIDS. But if you don't belong to one of those groups, you get the respectable diagnosis of you have tuberculosis, you have lymphoma, you have leukemia, you have Kaposi sarcoma, pneumocystis pneumonia, 30 plus diseases. Where is the press? How do they buy a story that a virus knows what country it's in? <laughs> Three symptoms in Africa, but 30 diseases in the United States and Europe. How do they buy the story that a virus has prejudices? It prefers men over women nine to one in the United States and Europe, but men and women equally in Africa. It knows whether you're gay or straight, married or single, black or white, it should be hired by the immigration department because it does one heck of a job. <laughs> this is what they've been feeding to the public and this is what you and the press have published. Yes.
It's funny, every time that I've stuck myself with a needle, I get calls from major television shows by excited young people who want to tell the truth. And then I get a call three days later telling me that it's been nixed at a higher level. That's no surprise. After all, who am I fighting? Two drug industries, one supposedly legitimate and the other illegitimate. And they do an awful lot of advertising, the supposed legitimate ones. All those things out there that they sell for your colds and everything else, that's the pharmaceutical industry. And they also put out prescription drugs, most of them. And they pull the purse strings. And so we have a better propaganda machine in the United States than Hitler had in his time. You see, Hitler pulled off a lie, and he was condemned for it by most of the world, although believed by three major groups of the Axis powers. The liars and killers like Fauci and Gallo and Hazeltine and Essex and Flossie von Stahl and the market officials these people are getting by with the lie and getting paid immense sums of money for it and praise from the rest of the world while they murder. The study at the University of Miami was completely fraudulent. You see, I believed that the virus caused AIDS from 1984 to 88. And I treated AIDS patients, one of the few doctors willing to. The doctors were scared for their lives to even treat the patient. And by the way, sticking my finger, nothing new. I did it lots of times in treating my AIDS patients. And in fact, it's amazing that in spite of the fact that we are at such great exposure to this deadly disease, the incidence of the disease amongst medical personnel of all types is less than the general population. This is a first in the history of science. Think about that. How is it possible? Maybe the virus has nothing to do with it. Not only maybe, the virus has nothing to do with it. In 1988, I was invited to a dinner where Burroughs Welcome was going to push AZT as a drug for treating AIDS. And we were told we could ask questions during the dinner because Margaret Fischel was going to be speaking. And when she mentioned that the drug AZT had 56 side effects, I raised my hand. And I said, Dr. Fischel, how do you do a double-blind study on a drug with 56 side effects? You've got to know if you're on the drug. And she said to me and the rest of the doctors sitting there, well, the placebo had 31. And I raised my hand again. How could a placebo have 31 side effects? How could an inert substance have 31 side effects? I didn't know what was wrong then, but I knew there was something wrong. I knew there was something dreadfully wrong, and I didn't know how dreadfully wrong and how deadly wrong it was. But the answer came years later. The FDA, as you probably know, released AZT after four months of a proposed six-month study. They cut it short because one group in this double-blind study where nobody knew who was on what, one group was doing better than another group. And so out of compassion, they terminated the study. I don't blame them for that. And sure enough, the AZT group was doing so much better than the placebo group. And so they released the drug. But then 18 months later, their own investigator from the FDA brought back his report. And guess what it showed? The participants in the study knew the first week who was on the drug and who wasn't. You didn't have a double-blind study. It wasn't the Cadillac of studies. Not only that, some of those on AZT admitted to sharing their drug 
with members of the placebo group. That explains the 31 side effects in a placebo group. Some of them were taking AZT side effects. But, and by the way, that makes it a complete washout as a scientific study. Right then and there, the drug should have been discontinued, called back. But then came the kicker in, the, in this report. The individuals on the AZT in the four months of the study received six times more blood transfusions than the placebo group. What happens when you get a blood transfusion? You look better, you feel better, and you live a little bit longer. But the most important question and lesson from all of this, you must ask the question, why did those on AZT need six times more transfusions in a four-month period than the individuals on the placebo? Because you're dealing with a killer drug and you need those blood transfusions to survive and coincidentally they made you look a little bit better and healthier than the other group. And then after I go through all this invariably somebody's going to ask the question, so what really causes AIDS? And I have to say it 10 times or 20 times in my book and I'm going to say it again now. We have known for 70 years why the other individuals in the study died. The number one cause is malnutrition and starvation. Well, to an extent that was true of some of these individuals, but only true because of the second reason. The number two cause is drugs. You recall, you fellows and, and gals in the press, a couple of weeks ago you reported in your newspapers that we were killing off our senior citizens with too many drugs. And how do you cure them? You get them off the drugs. And how were these people dying of so-called AIDS? From the number two cause, drugs. Both medical and street drugs. But one in particular that stood out and has been linked by 24 scientific papers with Kaposi's sarcoma, and that's poppers or amyl nitrite. It's very rare that you see a case of Kaposi sarcoma in Africa because they don't use poppers. And this is the first disease human disease we can't give to a simian monkey. And I'm talking about legitimate diseases. Because you see, the virologists have been coming up with more diseases than you can imagine. And haven't you bothered to notice most of them never pan out? They disappear from the headlines? And they're never heard of again? Because they weren't diseases really in the first place. Like SMON, a disease in uh, Japan, for 15 years they pursued viruses. And what did it turn out to be? Enter a viaform, a drug for diarrhea that they were using over there. Amazing, isn't it? And they spent 15 years and lots of millions of dollars, but guess what our virologists have done? Wow, they hold a candle to no one. For 20 years in Nixon's war on cancer, they spent over $20 billion looking for a virus that caused cancer. And they came up empty-handed. They not only couldn't find a retrovirus, which was the ideal choice, because it doesn't kill cells, and it's multiplied by the cells, which is what cancer cells do, but they never found any disease that it caused. But guess what they chose? for the scam of AIDS, a retrovirus. Already $20 billion in 20 years, we found nothing that it does. And we also found that absolutely it doesn't kill cells because if it did, it would commit suicide. It needs a cell in order to replicate, to be alive. So the epidemic would be over before it began. It's impossible, but this is the virus. They've just spent another $20 billion in only 10 years time and they're asking for more and now they want to give us a vaccine see oh will they make money with that they not only have a test for hiv which by the way is not for the virus it's for immunity like i say it's the first disease in the history of medicine when you're immune to it you're going to die from it 
But now, <coughs> they want to give us 